Alright guys, new video for you. It is going to be a potentially competitive new Wada, Beast deck. Well, yes, it's Beast. It's got a bit of spice in there too. Um, yeah, let's get into it. Manifold Blade. I'm an idiot. Manifold Blade, deal one and plus one damage for every additional Beast in play. It's pretty crazy, really, because you you spam and beast. Everything's virtually low cost, and you know it's, it's it's a value. It's a value. It's a value card. It's ridiculous. The deal one damage off the base is ridiculous, regardless. So, pretty good card. One drop. What can you ask? Basilisk. All of the friendly beasts have one plus one plus oh. Two drop two two. Pretty ridiculous again. To be fair, the theme of this deck is its value. It's a very good value deck. Empress Prize or card for each friendly unit. You're gonna have a lot of units. Simple as that, really. You can draw like four, three cards. Pretty good. Hi, you know. Whenever a friendly beast enters the battlefield, gain plus one, plus one. Self explanatory. Another great value card, paired with low cost beasts. Pretty fucking crazy. Invigorate. Give a friendly unit plus one, plus one for each beast you control. It's. You're gonna probably get plus four, plus four. And it doesn't have to be on a beast, just as a as a heads up. So you can you can buff your hebo a little bit if you, you know, your two one's not that great. Um, and the main lion two one for two. This is a optional card. I personally like it because of a lot of aggro Odin out there. Their ability power is null and void against the main lion. In that Odin, a little bit a little bit worse. White tiger at the start of your turn gain plus what plus zero plus one. Two drop two two again. It, it there's a lot of two drop two twos. Nine times out of ten, it's going to be a two three, which is pretty good. One extra HP, it's it's great. Um, Elder Harpy three two for three draw a card again. It's a beast, gets buffed, draws a card. It's great. Hebo two one for three, just return those annoying cards which generally are anti fun. Apollo, I don't know, into the late game furies. What else? St spicy picks like maybe the baboon has guard on it. There's a, there's a f early game you, you can gain a lot of pressure just by dropping a hero and returning a card. Just make sure you don't be you're not returning like the likes of cards that are gonna silence with a war cry and stuff that that's gonna end up you in deep water. Um, select the friendly as attack to attack as damage to enemy unit projection. Um, it's a great card. Review the amount of buffs you're gonna get on your beasts. It deals a lot of damage, which is which is great. It's awesome. It's a good card. Serta is a personal pick of mine. Only one of three drop one four. Charge adjacent friendly units have plus one plus oh. It's it's a crazy card. You know, it's it's actual one attack. That could be the difference between winning the game. I don't know what that's for me. Chaofeng four, drop three three immune to melee. I have one games off the back of this card alone. There's only one of them because you don't really need more than one. It's just in there. Um You buff that card with with even invigorate. And they don't have anything to stop it. It's just a really big creature that melee units can't kill. And there's a lot of melee units going around right now. <laughs> Poisonous Hydra. One of the more expensive cards in this deck. Add a Poisonous card to your opponent's hand. 4 drop 4-4. Four, four. It's a beast again. It gets buffed. Poison card if they don't play the 2 mana to get rid of it. That's 4 damage they're going to take at the start of every turn. Or ev every one of their turns. So it, it stacks up pretty quickly. It becomes a pain in the actual backside. Guan Yu. Again it's a personal pick. Whenever you play a spell, deal one damage to all enemy units. It's pretty good. You're gonna you're gonna be using your power, and for those like you get into those late game situations when you don't want to be, at least you have some semblance of removal, which is pretty cool. Suku, if you control another beast, Suku has charge five three for five, and nine times out of ten it has charge, so you're just hitting them in the face. It's a pretty good card. Dragon King. Deal three damage to an enemy, then deal then three damage to all enemies in the same row. This card is ridiculous. You can do six damage instantly to their core. You can clear a whole row of minions if they're foolish enough to stack them all up. It is a ridiculous card. I highly rate it, and I'll be this will be the first card I expensively craft for the deck. Linnaean Hydra. You only take one damage from a single source member of this unit. Attacks gain th plus three plus zero. It, this card's crazy. People will go out of their way to use all form of removal on this card. It is an incredibly powerful card. It's a beast. It gets buffed. It's stupidly. It's ridiculous. It is overpowered. It is broken. It is great. 
Put it in your deck, you won't regret it. It is a bomb. People hate this card. Playing against this card. It is a crazy good card, and I love it. It is amazing, and I will happily use this card forever and a day. Crazy card. I'll play a couple of games, win or lose. I'll explain the deck and how it works, and I will see you there. Welcome back, guys. We are in game number one of two with Beast Noir. Hopefully, we don't get utterly clobbered by Agro Odin because Agro Odin is the antithesis of anti fun. You want to be as aggressive as possible with this deck. As possible. You don't want to be sitting back here. There's one card I would play there, and that's Basilisk. Basilisk should be kept alive. You shouldn't really be attacking the face with it. Example of put Basilisk as far away as possible. Ignore his 1 1 and just go face. You'll notice I played White Tiger on one of the corners and not the middle because, simple, I guess, explanation. He's going to want to put a 1 1 here and a 1 1 here. Me putting this here and putting Basilisk behind them stops him from walking up. See, now he has to trade. Well, he's not going to trade, actually. Ooh, spicy. I, mean, I don't really know why he's playing that card. But you can see the meaning behind it. Now we're going to play this here. We trade with this. And we trade this. Simple reason being, he would have run up, killed our 4 2, and killed this. He can still do that. He can play Thor right now. Thor dies, however. It wouldn't be in his best interest to do this. You'll notice I talk with my hands a lot. It's just what I do. If you are enjoying the guide, by the way, and you found me somewhat interesting and entertaining and maybe, you know, informative enough, then please do leave a like, subscribe, leave a comment, tell me where I messed up and tell me if you enjoyed it or not. We now know one of his crippling curses are down, by the way. He has no mana, he has no cards, and we've just got our second Suku. So yeah, any input, it would be greatly appreciated. Follow me on Twitter, DM me a picture of a, I don't know, a raccoon robbing cat biscuits, it's all good. See now he's made a misplay. He left a spot open for Suku. I'm not saying he should have known Suku was in my deck, but it would have been prudent to play around it. Now we put Suku behind and we attack. Same thing. Hmm. We will play the second Suku. And we will go face. Putting him on the back foot. As it stands, he's going to have to clear the board. He has to, or he loses. You notice I didn't play the Hydra. Hydra's the bomb. We want him to use as much clear, and hopefully use the second Crippling Curse. Crippling Curse is a nuisance. For Lenny and Hydra. Yes, he gets the he gets the free cast. See that's an awkward that's all awkward. That really is awkward. He gets the free cast with Scuddy. And he traded in the right situation. He does get the free cast with Scuddy, but we aren't too worried about that. Hmm. We're going to drop the Hydra here so Yamiya can't do his his stuff, let's be honest. It, it, freezing the Hydra is horrible. This may be the second Crippling Curse. This may be a Silence. A Silence is okay because we can still keep it alive. Crippling Curse is a pain in the backside for the Hydra. Because he can take one damage and he's gone. And it's just, it is a pain in the backside. But again, we do have, we also have the Poisonous Hydra in this deck. And that, that's great against Agro because they have to spend mana they otherwise would not want to spend on clearing it. We played away from the Emir so he can't freeze us. We have return cards to hand. See, we, we've won because obviously he doesn't know we've got Hebo Habois in our um, in our hand. So 
that's the versatility of this deck. It's not just an outright aggro deck. We do have ways to deal with threats. We do have ways to slow the opponent down. We have ways of removing these annoyances, let's say. He's going to play two 1-1s, one I assume. Mayhem? Mayhem doesn't do much. And that's first game, first win. Hopefully we play against maybe somewhat of a control deck and not so much an aggro deck because they're a little bit, whilst a little bit harder to play against, they are the way, they're more fun, let's say. I'll see you in the next game. I hope you enjoyed the first. Welcome to game two of two. We are playing Nuar Beast against Ra. Hopefully this is a control deck. Win or lose, I'll try and convey the point of how to play against a raw control deck if it is a raw control deck. Also you'll notice I kept Poisonous Hydra and I kept Chao Feng. Chao Feng's great against Sobek. Whilst he may just remove him, it's still a thing he has to use removal on. You'll notice I kept Poisonous Hydra. Ra likes using his mana in a very precise way. We can prevent that with Poisonous Hydra. We will just send Sobek back to his hand. There's no reason to let Sobek stay on the field. It's the only card we could play. It's a good card we could play. Slows him down immensely. Next turn we play Poisonous Hydra. He loses two mana automatically. Sobek is a 2-1. Two, one. A, one, a two drop 1-3. However, if we don't attack, he has nothing to heal. So it's a worry we, we don't have right now. I misplayed, I should have moved Hero up, but I'm only human. I will go back and think, correct my misplays. If we would have moved Hebo up, we could have done 2 damage to the Sobek. Whilst we could have cleared Sobek, more, more rather, because obviously our ability is Nuwa, we get a 1 damage, 0 cost spell if we use it on that turn. But it is 2 mana, regardless. Manifold Blade is it's a big deal right now. We can we can clear we can kill Sober. We don't really we don't want to play a beast, let's be honest, but let's see how this works. Hebo's not a beast, so it's fine just clearing this. That's an annoyance. But we will just kill Sober. No reason to let him exist. We keep the range 2 1. Po getting poison on the. <coughs> Hydra is not great, but it's. We've got two Sukus in, two Sukus in hand, and we do have the Lemian Lion, I think it's called. The Lemian Lion. It sure is the Lemian Lion. Now ways to deal with this. We don't have many, I'll be honest. Rather than play Suku, because we know what he's going to do, we could force him. He may just choose to kill the immune to range. Sorry if you heard the Facebook ping, I forgot to turn it off. We didn't play Suku because he's going he's gonna heal, he's gonna kill it. So we play the immune to melee, which is not gonna be a great deal of use to us right now. That's exactly what we wanted. Remember, we don't really care if this dies. Now we don't even need to let it die. We can play Guan. We can use our two spells. And just kill it the old old fashioned Guan way, let's be honest. If you don't if you don't have Guan by the way, you don't need to play Guan. It's just a personal choice of mine. I like the removal, I like his ability. He's a two five for five and yeah, that, again, he should shoot a 5-mana Execute. 
that's great. That's really good for us. It done its job straight away. But if you can't, don't have Guan and you can't afford Guan. Uh, Fury, put Fury in. It's a beast. Put Bull Demon King if you have Bull Demon King. There, there's a multitude of different things you can put into the deck. It's it's personal choice. The base is. The base is a beast deck. So mix around with the beasts. You don't need to play these extravagant cards, I guess you'd say. I, I just play them because I like them. I mean, if you have Wukong, I'd put Wukong in this deck. Wukong's crazy. It's a legendary, yes, I admit. But if you if you like the card, then put the card in. The base is a beast deck. You want to keep the beast synergy. You change too much. It starts being a beast deck and it just starts being a mid-range Nuwa deck. Which, whilst is good, that's not what this specific guide's about. I'll open a pack. As seems to have become custom in these videos, I'll open a pack. And obviously that, the animation bugs there, do we get anything worthwhile? And we do not, as per. Because that was Beast New War. Again, she, she's a, it's a good deck. If you want me to play in ranked with these decks, by the way, you have to tell me in the comments. I just play casual because it's easier. You only ever play against Agro Odin. And it, it's just a bore fest, if I'm honest with you. I can play it. I don't mind, just let me know. And um, I hope you enjoyed the guide. It's pretty simple. The, the deck's straightforward. You just keep throwing cards on the field. It does its job. It's a fun deck. I love it. I love Beast Noir. And I hope you enjoyed the guide. I will see you in the next one. Have a good night, good morning, good evening, and good day. And as always, keep winning.